the biodiversity in Malaysia. Malaysia is a developing country in which tons of efforts are being done to revolutionize the country itself. These efforts often impact the environmental environment negatively. And as of now, many of uh, animals in Malaysia are nearing its extinction because of the deeds of the humans. Today, we will be focusing on uh, the discussion about tapir and in extinction in Malaysia. And our first things first, when we are talking about tapir, the first thing we have to know is uh, its origin and its general features. So, uh, tapir uh, came from its genus, which was named tapirus. Uh, it came from the species uh, that is given the scientific name tapirus indicus. Or right now, it is mostly uh, referred to as Malay tapir or Asian tapir. It's uh, common features that we can see that uh, it generally have a massive barrel shaped body and it is rounded uh, in the back of the body. One of its distinctive features is that it has unique prehensile nose, much like the elephants, but on a much smaller scale. And it has the same use as the elephants which is to pick up fruits and eat, eat them. Tapir also have a thick leathery yet supple skin with little to no hair. Uh, this depends on where the tapir lives uh, as the uh, climate uh, might change its uh, features. Tapir also have short legs, uh, neck, neck and tail. Uh, it also has uh, short ears and tapir is generally a round animal. It also has uh, small eyes and uh, myopic. Now, let's talk about the tapir habitats. If you want to know, the tapir are found from the southern Myanmar, which is located in Burma, to the southwestern Thailand, and also through the peninsula of Malaysia to the Indonesia island of Sumatra. Basically, the habitat is in rainforest and lower mountain forest. Besides, tapir would prefer live in the water and grassy areas, the places to shelter during the day, and a next hour liver during a night time. And I want to share with you a bit of fun fact of tapirs that they are actually can climb steep stoppers and also can swim more faster more faster than other animals. Tapi are mainly active at night, even though they are not exclusively nocturnal. They are also able to inhabit primary and secondary degraded forests with a constant source of water. Now let's move on to the importance of tapirs. Tapirs are helpful to their native landscape in many ways. One role is that of seed dispersers. Tapirs eat a variety of seasonal fruits, for example mango and fig trees. So when mango or fig trees come into season, tapirs can often be found underneath these trees, eating the fruits that fall from them or just dropped by monkeys munching on fruit from above. So because of the tapirs' enormous appetite for fruit, they have earned the title Gardeners of the Forest. The seeds of the fruits they eat are dispersed when they wander to a new location to deposit scat. And those seeds later sprout and grow new trees, helping the forest to regenerate. They are masters at dispersing seeds and leaving them well fertilized, providing themselves and other wildlife with an ongoing supply with uh, ongoing supply of food and shelter. So forest structure and diversity would be very different without the tapir in the landscape. Tapirs are also important recyclers of nutrients, helping the soil and landscape thrive. They also serve as biological indicators of the health and vitality of an area, which could explain why it appears to be the first to decline when there is human disturbance because of their large size, slow reproductive rate, and also sensitivity to their environment. 
Okay, now we will be discussing about uh, the threats that are faced by the tapir in Malaysia. First one being, um, tapir is the target of poaching from humans right now because uh, of the price of tapir itself. You see now, uh, there are several zoos that are involved in illegal tradings of tapir and the price of the tapir can go up uh, to a ridiculous amount like $5,000 so uh, it will be uh, much uh, it will serve as a way to make uh, someone richer and tapir is also involved in poaching because um, in Malaysia the hunters hunt the tapir uh, for their meat or to make their hide or skin as a collection in their rooms. The second one, tapis are often uh, involved when there is a deforestation happen uh, surrounding the forest resulting in the habitats becoming fragmented due to the roots and agriculture that is growing in their natural habitat. Um, this will oftentimes uh, negatively impact uh, the tapir and their natural habitat and make them uh, harder to live because of the lack of food resources and water and a place to live. Uh, sometimes the tapirs also might also be involved in some road accidents resulting in more casualties. The third one and the last one is um, the enrichment uh, of people into protected park areas uh, such as people like farmers and people uh, that are doing illegal logging will uh, impact the tapir and its surrounding and at the end uh, the tapir can no longer uh, live in peace and find the right place to live. There are a lot of actions taken by the government in Malaysia in order to protect endangered species such as Nayan Tapi. One of the actions taken by the government is the establishment of Sungai Dusun Wala Conservation Center that located in Hulu Selangor. The Sungai Dusun Wala Conservation Center is an ex situ breeding center for wildlife species such as tapir and also porcupines. Apart from that, Central Forest Pine CFS led a project to connect four major areas of forest across the peninsula to provide a better protection of the habitats for wildlife. Other than that, Pahiri Taikoso cooperated with Kopai Haile Zoo in the Tapi Conservation Program in Pahang and went to set up a Malayan Tapi Conservation Center that provides a refuge for displaced tapi, as well as having secondary aim of studying and breeding captive tapi. Also, under the test measure plan in 2010, warning signs about animal crossing are to be put along the roadsides where are the frequent sighting of wildlife. As you can see, tapir is nearing extinction and we, as a human, need to save them to make sure that it can be seen by our future generation. There are lots of action that can be done by us and some of the action will be stated by me now. Number one is community involvement. We can engage local communities on tapir conservation effort. This involves educating programs and also community-based monitoring. By doing this, we can raise awareness about the importance of tapir on maintaining ecosystem balance. Number two is fundraising. We can support fundraising pro programs or even organize a fun fundraising, <coughs> fundraising events. By doing this, we can generate funds for tapir conservation 
app program projects. This fund then will be directed towards researchers, habitat protection, and also community involvement initiative. A researcher sometimes works on lab to save this animal and it can cost by a lot. So this fundraising can reduce the usage of money to help the animal be alive still. And lastly is collaboration with authorities. We can collaborate with wildlife authorities, environmental agencies, and also non-profit organization that involve in conservation. By doing this, we can support or initiate projects that focus on topic conservation. All of the point that I have stated is a must for us to, to do in order to save the topic from extinction. By watching this video, we can conclude that tape is an important part in ecosystem in Malaysia. So we cannot overlook that the fact tape is an animal near its extinction. A lot of things can be done to prevent this, whether it will be individually or collectively. So I hope this video will provide benefit to the viewers outside to be more aware of the issue that is threatening the tape population.